Hi, my name's Luke. I'm from Cognitive Geology. And today we're here to talk about a couple of things that can be quite dangerous about do, using the defaults when it comes to making our property models. Before we get into that, I just want to ask a little, pose, pose a question to you here and see what you think. Often when I'm doing a peer review, I see a lot of people present me a histogram and say, you know, here's an example of why this is a good model. Um, and usually there's one of these two outcomes that they're referencing. So if you have an input data set like this that's got a negative skew, so a, a tail off towards the low end, and you have a model that matches that very, very accurately, or a model that doesn't, something that goes the other direction, um, which one of these do you think you can assess and say is likely to be a better model? I think you can actually make that call, and as we go through this video, I'll see um, whether we come back to doing that. So let's have an answer for that at the end and see whether we can actually, just from that piece of information, pick a better model. So when we look at uh, doing geostatistics, there's a really important underlying assumption that almost all of the geostatistical methods have, and that is that you're distributing with the geostatistical part at the end something that's completely stationary. There's no loaded dice. If you roll the dice on one side of the reservoir, the chances of you coming up sixes is the same as rolling it on the other. So it's very important that we've taken all of those trends out. So the first geostat assumption that we have to make sure we're checking off is that we've dealt with all of those um, non-stationary components. Of course, that means we have to account for the geological trends. Uh, we do know that geology has trends. It has a lot of trends. That's what we base our, our careers upon, picking those trends. Whether that be something like this uh, ExxonMobil slug diagram here with a proximal to distal trend or a coursing upwards trend, or it could be uh, any other number of, uh, of possible trends, we do know that they exist inside geology. And the question comes, do our fascies models necessarily address all of the station, non-stationary components that, we're import that we consider important? Um, and what we could probably uh, argue is that that's very rarely the case. When we look at our non-stationary behaviours, we still observe things like porosity depth trends that overprint uh, any of the depositional fascies. And in truth, when it comes down to the way that we construct a fascist model, we're usually talking about a fascist assemblage model. So there may still be internal characteristics of uh, non-stationary behaviours such as this finding upwards channel trend that you could reasonably expect in any given uh, set of, uh, of fascist assemblages. So there are still a couple of significantly important trends that can exist inside your data. So let's put that back into the context of how these models are created. Let's decode the defaults. If we're using a histogram that matches our well data, what we're really saying is that that well data set has sampled what exists in the, in the geology perfectly. We have got a good distribution of random samples from your reservoir and they all line up. If then we distribute that input distribution we distribute the observed data just using the variogram now within the fascies perhaps, we are also invoking that there are no additional geological trends. Those two statements are usually pretty challenging to support. So when we decode those defaults and we have a look at understanding what's going on with our defaults in our systems, I think we can actually answer this question. And in my opinion, we can determine which one's the better model. If you match the data perfectly, it's unlikely that you've dealt with all of these non-stationary effects. If you don't match it, you've done something to account for it. So my uh, simple rule of thumb that I often use is selecting the sample, the model that has got something different towards the input data set, because in order for that to be right, it's just too high a threshold that's needed. So I think you can answer which model is best, and I'm curious to hear what you think. Thank you very much. My name's Luke from Cognitive Geology.